Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the B&H Virtual Event Space. Today, we're talking how to shoot for a fashion magazine. We're joined by Jason Rivera. Jason, how are you today? What's up? I'm doing good. Excellent. Happy to have you here. Uh, we have Janine from Stella Pro in the background, off camera, but here with us. So for anybody who's got any of those really tricky, techie questions that you want to get in there, go for it. Janine is our go-to for that. Uh, Jason is the photographer, so he'll be covering all the photographic stuff. So want to give a huge thanks, as always, to our sponsors for the event, Stella Pro. Thank you so much for setting us up with Jason and bringing him here today to all of you, the viewers. If this is your first time or millionth time, get your questions in. You know how it works. Joining us on Zoom, you can use the Q&A tab. And if you're joining us on Vimeo or Facebook, you can use the comment section. But without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Jason, who's going to take us through it and say thanks again, Jason. Yeah, um, I guess I'll start off with a little bit about myself. Um, I am 30 years old, live in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I opened a few photo studios in the span of like four years in different locations. Um, I have kind of like forced my way into the fashion industry in Los Angeles by meeting various people, a lot of a who you know concept. And uh, yeah, I'm Stella ProLite uh, ambassador as well. Uh, which I'm very grateful for because they, uh, they've they actually like seen my potential and have been a big help as well. And from there, uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying the ride as a fashion photographer in Los Angeles, uh, as a working fashion photographer, that's all I do. So it's been, uh, it's been pretty fun. <laughs> um, uh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. so, so sorry about that. Yeah. So, so, I mean, why don't you, why don't you kind of take us through like the Stella pros and, and kind of your workflow and, and how you kind of, you know, come up with your concepts and, and, you know, just kind of from, from sort of that start of the shoot and, and conceptualizing all through. So when I start a shoot, um, generally I work with a hair stylist, makeup artist, and then a wardrobe stylist. And from there, we have a mood board. We, we try to see if we're going to go within the mood board or if we're just going to just make it all up, like straight from scratch. Uh, whenever we work with the talent, I like to just tell the talent, hey, like, how are you? Like, get to know them, small talk. I feel like I'm a master of small talk. Uh, when it, photography, in my mind, when it comes to producing a fashion shoot, magazine shoot, it's orchestra. It's, a, it's kind of like I'm going to start a play and then we guide we guide everyone together we try to figure out a fun concept and into the shoot from lighting uh I've I've learned a lot about lighting different lighting styles from continuous lighting from strobes led rgb different color grading just that you can do outside of the photoshop realm and uh it doesn't really come into play after like I always say the first outfit, let's just try to make it super downsized, super fun, and then try to like slowly wean ourselves into this creative buzz. I don't, I generally don't have like a creative buzz right off the gun. I have to just like shoot first look. I'm like, okay, let's start with the inside. Let's shoot in the backdrop. If I don't like it, let's just go outside. Let's just see how that works. Use some natural lighting, use some bouncing, get a reflector or even get a scrim and just try to cover some light. Uh, I really don't get that, ah, oh, I got the shot until I, I feel it. I don't know, it's just like, you just feel it, you understand that's a shot. I try to just be very lax about my shooting. I'm never, uh, I, I do a lot of directing to people. I, I work with some people that are just actors, not models. So they don't do the good fluid movement. They don't want, they don't understand that concept. So I just tell them, hey, like walk like as if you're uh, you're in a role, you're in downtown and you're a cop and you want to just like look cool, but like you don't want to be seen, but you know you're looking at somebody and I am that somebody and you just see them for that moment. And then like boom, they get the shot, we get the shot and I'm super stoked. And then we just move on from there. Uh, the creative process in a fashion shoot, uh, especially when it comes to editorial, uh, taking input from the team is so important there's a makeup artist that will see something that you can't see. There's a hairstylist that will notice a hair. Always be 
assertive when it comes to, hey, like you have an opinion on this. Like I'm doing, I'm shooting in this angle. Sometimes the art, the artist or the model or the uh, actor doesn't like being shot low. They'll be like, I hate when people shoot me low. I'm like, just turn your head a little bit and just give me a chance. You know, it might work. Uh, sometimes you butt heads with people, but for the most part, it's a team effort. I'm the photographer. I'm taking pictures of everyone's work. You know, it's a group project. And I think uh, as a fashion photographer, it's important to have uh, that language and just uh, understanding that your team is very important. And I, I try never to like disregard anyone when it comes to the way we all work. And it's it's a machine, you know, that we're just a bunch of cogs trying to create like work masterpieces or just the more content for that creative machine, which is social media and, you know, syndications and whatever it goes to, even if it goes straight to print. Yeah. Social media, the S word. (laughs) So, so talking about lighting, because obviously that's, that's part of the reason why we're here is, you know, we're talking lighting Stella pro that's, that's kind of their, their niche is, is lighting. So I do have the reflex. I have one of the reflexes and then the, the other continuous light, which is like the CLX. And I do like both of these lights when it comes to like the convenience of just putting it on a boom and just having somebody hold it and just do that Hollywood lighting approach. Uh, I think the biggest benefit about this light is that I can take it anywhere I want and know that I'm gonna get the same type of lighting that's comparable to a strobe, just as long as I'm considerate in the fact of you know, I'm not in an area that's way too bright outside. If I'm in a studio, this is fun. All gung ho. I'll put whatever modifier I want. I put a beauty dish. Uh, I haven't used this with an umbrella, but I do use a beauty dish a lot and a softbox as well. Uh, even with a Fresnel, uh, I do like that look when it's continuous. Uh, a lot of my, uh, oh, maybe 70% of my shoots with the reflex has been with continuous with a Fresnel. And it's been pretty like it's been pretty consistent every time I use it. I uh, I don't I don't really have a like I, I do I, I have a huge array of lights. I have over 30, 40 different lights in in my like in my office. And I usually gravitate to this one nowadays because it is summer and it is hot. And I'm like, I'm not gonna be lugging around all this extra equipment. And and it's funny, I come into a photo shoot and people are just like, oh damn. Uh, you where's your light? It's in my pocket, and then I just pop it out. But when it when it does come to lighting, uh, I try to do more stylistic, high contrasty type of light lighting style when it comes with this light, just because it does give me the effects that I do want. Um, if I if I do show an image, which I will, uh, you'll see how like the dynamic dynamicness of the lighting hits the face and hits the skin, and it doesn't blow out, so it is pretty uh. It, it is pretty proficient light from what I, from what I have used. So I think, yeah. I think that's, that's kind of interesting. You know, you talked about showing up, especially the, the small kind of footprint of it and not having to lug around, you know, I think, I think some people probably, or maybe I'm just dating myself here, but <laughs> some people will remember the days of, you know, lugging around power packs and things like that and having all these different cables that you have to hook up to the lights you know, how do you, how do you get around that? How do you kind of navigate that as somebody who's shooting, you know, magazine work and things like that, you know, you go into a shoot and and you're, you are carrying around something that doesn't have that stereotypical look, you know, people, I I find, especially even, even kind of, if you look at the mirrorless revolution, you know, people always have this kind of preconceived notion of what a photographer looks like and what, you know, gear they carry. And so if you're not carrying, you know, a one DX with these big, huge, you know, strobes, all of a sudden, you know, people are like, this is, this is the photographer. This is who showed up, you know, I mean, how do you, in, in, in nowadays where, where I think at least for photographers, that's our goal essentially is, Hey, how can we get rid of all this big, huge gear and lighten our load and just kind of fit a few key items into our bag and then go shoot? You know, how do you navigate that in especially such a such a interesting world like the fashion world? Um, I, I I always told myself when I first started, it's like I, I when I first started, I wanted all the gear. I wanted the best camera. I wanted the best lights, the best strobes, best modifiers. And over time, learning like my ability to shoot uh, 
literally sitting down and understanding lighting as a photographer, looking at having mentors. Uh, I've learned that confidence and just knowing your ability in shooting, you could bring whatever light like even looking at Instagram, like videos of kids in India, like third world country, like different different parts of the world that have nothing, but still are able to create some beautiful images. Like it's not the gear, it's having fun. It's understanding that once you get into a photo shoot, you're, you're there for a reason. Like you put that confidence into work and using the Stella systems since it's so light and, and it's, like these, the people who created this light, like they really thought about the convenience factor. They really thought of, oh, let's just put a strobe and a continuous light all in one. Let's also have it link with a Godox trigger. You know, like, like, uh, like it's just, it's convenient. And if anyone does say anything like, oh, what is this? Like, like, well, I'm just like, and they try to give me some kind of shade. I, I just don't like, look at the delivery. Once you see the delivery, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be something that we worked for and we tried hard for. So uh, when it comes to gear, after, like, if you've been in the industry, if you're working consistently, you should understand that it's not about the gear. It's just about, it's you, you know? Uh, go into a photo shoot with confidence and whatever lighting that you either can afford or you're given uh, or, you're, or you're borrowing or renting, you know, you just go in with confidence, do, do the shoot and come out, you know, knowing that you, you're there, that you're lucky enough to make this, you know, a hobby, a job or whatever aspect it is in your life. Um, being an artist is a beautiful thing. And in a time where people need to be happier, that's what we're doing. We're producing happy work and good work, stimulating work. So I think that's extremely important in this day and age. It's always been, but I feel like it's more important now. Nice. So I know, I know you do have some videos. I know you do have some photos. Why don't you, why don't you pull those up and maybe you can kind of take us through some of, some of those shoots and images and kind of walk us through, you know, your, your process through that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just get my screen share sharing now. And then, so I'll go with one of these, this one. So I'm going to go full screen. All right. I think this is a Instagram reel. So let's see. So from here, I, I'll just like run it through the quick 17 seconds and you just see like a typical photo shoot day with me. I change the backdrops. I take people on location. That's the rooftop of my house. All righty. And then showing off some work. So a typical day, uh, I did have a photo studio in downtown uh, for 10 months. And then I got kicked out for throwing too many events. But aside from that, uh, I would use it a lot. It was called Studio Stipendus. And I would take the client to the studio. We would uh, figure out outfits and then we'd figure out colors that would work with the outfits and try to get some concepts uh, for this part, like for this shoot. Um, uh, we, it was a second location inside uh, the photo studio. We wanted to do a long exposure uh, motion blur uh, vibe. So I put one light to the left that was continuous and then the, there was a light to the right that was uh, a strobe I put at full power. And then I was able to shoot a one third of a second and create some motion blur effects. It, 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 whatever subtle movement that I had him do, it, it was just like, it worked and it looked pretty epic. The photos aren't released yet, so I cannot show them, but I can show the video. And then uh, this is one of the Stella, uh, one of the Stella lights that I was given and I'm using a Fresnel and I'm on top of a uh, billboard, which is on top of my roof uh, right here where I'm living. And uh, I just had the guy just say, hey, just stand by the billboard and do something cool. And it's in front of kind of like a mock green screen. So uh, I was able to change the background and turn it into whatever I wanted, which was pretty fun. And then uh, uh, when it comes to me and like location scouting, uh, I do try to keep it very close to home. And there's so much stuff in downtown that I think there's one where he's right here. There's, there's this cool little New York style, like, alleyway where there's uh, galleries and liquor stores and uh using it was like perfect lighting so i had like the rear hair light area of natural light and then i just used the stella light right here as you can see 
And then I would use it uh, with a soft box without a diffuser uh, just to create this super shiny like effect on him, making it look like he's, you know, on top of like the third, fourth story of a building. And I was very close up with him. Let's see. This one is just casual, very chill. Uh, photo shoot. I think I just used one strobe with an umbrella. And it was all continuous lighting, as you can see, no strobe. Wait, oh, I guess it was a continuous light. Yeah. And then this one, I used a RGB light uh, to the left, gave him some red look. He had a really cool outfit. And I had him just walk around this graffiti area. And he looked pretty cool. I was, uh, I was very stoked for this, uh, for this shoot. I wish I could show you the one with the pug because the pug popped up and uh, we were uh, shooting with the pug. If there's like people that have like interesting, like if they have an animal or if, uh, uh, if you're able to go inside like a gallery, like sometimes this gallery behind uh, the model is open and I'd be like, hey, can I go inside and shoot in there? And they would let you. So a lot of it is like situational for me too when it comes to shooting some of these editorials. So I'll show you guys one more time and then I'll go into a different video. And most of my fashion shoots take around like four to five hours just because of a lot of maintenance when it comes to the hair and makeup, which is extremely important. Let's see. So I'll go to the next video. This is with, is with the reflex. Let's see. So we were shooting in a, a beautiful, like uh, it was just a really big house in the Hollywood Hills. And I was, I, I, if I remember, I was on the first floor and he was on the second floor and I had uh, the Marilyn Monroe picture kind of like in the centerpiece behind him as a backdrop. Then I had him looking down, looking left, looking right. Just lax vibe. This was for uh, La Contenta, which is a New York City based suit, custom suit, uh, custom suit brand. And uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Nah. Let's see. I try to always use natural light with strobe and mix it up. Uh, I think that's very important. Use your, use the elements when you're outside or in an area that's perfectly lit. And here's another one. This is just with, the, I think it was with the Fresnel. And I was just shooting the model with this really cool, uh, like printed backdrop uh, that was in the, uh, that was just there. It was a fancy house, so it was pretty cool. Uh, oh, I think this was the movie theater in the in the house, and I had the model just vibing. And then from there, yeah. And then I'll show you one of the images that I took from that shoot as well. It's right here. So this shot was taken at the mansion and then it's all three. So this one, I obviously, I used the sun and then I used one of the lights to beam onto the left of him. So I had sun used as, I tried to match the amount of power of the sun with uh, the model. This one, I had a side light just to the right. It was a reflex. And uh, as you can see, the light curved perfectly on him. If you want to know the camera I was using, I was using the Sony a7R III. And then lastly, it's this one. And I didn't use any lights for this one. I just used a scrim over top of his head just to block the light. And I use a, a, the Luminar software to change the background because it was a little blown out. And yeah, for, for there, uh, that's uh, like, so for this shoot, I guess, uh, not using any lighting, just using uh, a scrim, which is a diffuser, just like a panel diffuser to cover the light. Uh, whenever I shoot outside, I really like to use scrims. I really like to use diffusers just because the best lighting uh, is the sun, in, in my opinion. It's always been something that I love to work with. And I've been working a lot more because I don't have a photo studio. So I have been trying to shoot on location and I have been trying to see, you know, different times of days where the sun hits a human, uh, what type of uh, uh, buildings, what color the buildings are that are affecting the color of the model or even the sensor in my camera, the white balance. Uh, there's just a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of different variables that uh, can change the color of an image and the look. So I always take into consideration that. So yeah, let's see if I have another image to show you. This was this one was in studio. 
I uh, used uh, the Savage Paper, uh, what was it, the Fashion Gray background. Uh, his uh, his sweater was actually blue, and then I just desaturated it on Photoshop. Um, this one went to the cover of S uh, Swagger magazine. I was super happy about that. Uh, uh, this guy was a great model. He just like was super active, super happy, super jumpy, and uh, it was easy to work with somebody like him because it, he everything I told him was like, oh yeah, I can do that. I can do this, and uh, yeah, it was pretty good. So from there. Uh, that's pretty much what I have for showing. So let me just get off the share. Stop sharing. Okay. Awesome. So, so you know, like that, that's something that I think comes up a lot, you know, being able to kind of work in an environment where you're, you're sort of, you're directing, you know, the, the person who you're shooting and kind of telling them what you want out of them. I think something that comes up a lot is, is how do you kind of break that down and how do you create that rapport with them in such a short amount of time to, to ultimately a get them to look their best so that, you know, the image that you capture is obviously the image that the client wants, but also you capture them in a light that, you know, portrays them properly. And, you know, they're, they're going to leave feeling good. You're going to leave feeling good. The client feels good. You know, everybody involved is like, okay, this is great. Um, so they're the shoots that I work with, I work with a lot of uh, public relations people, so they will always be in the shoot. So a lot of the time there is already like that broken barrier with the PR, somebody that they have to pay for to, you know, help them uh, market themselves. And that's perfect for me because the door is always open and the ability to just be comfortable with somebody, especially a stranger like me or like the makeup hair. Uh, that's always great. Building the rapport, if I if there isn't a PR, um, I try to join in on the conversation with when they're doing their hair and makeup, try to get to know them a little bit, ask them, are you from uh, Los Angeles? Like, how long have you been here for? What are your dreams? What are your goals? Uh, just being really, just being chill, just be yourself. Uh, I think that's extremely important. I try not to be uh, someone different and not try, I try not to brag. I try not to uh, feel any you know, type of intimidation when it comes to these shoots. Uh, like I said, it's like, it, it, it's kind of like an orchestra. It's kind of like a play. Like uh, I'm in the end, I'm kind of like the director, the narrator of the story. And we're just creating one piece after another piece after another piece. Uh, another good way just to get comfortable with the talent uh, would just be, uh, let it be like, hey, you want a coffee? Do you want like just do you want? We can go get some coffee. I can grab you some uh, water or whatever. Just, just be nice, you know. Just uh, yeah, just be nice. There's sometimes like I, I remember when I when I first started doing magazine shoots, we would shoot in my living room, and uh, I would play PlayStation because uh, I just got the PlayStation Five, and I would just be like, oh, okay, I'm playing games. And I was like, wait, what am I doing? I should just like being interactive, hanging out with people. So I stopped playing video games during my shoots. But it, uh, so I stopped doing that, but I got more, you know, interactive and like, hey, how are you guys? But I think uh, I think it's just being real, just uh, being confident, real and open to, you know, what they have to say, because sometimes people come in with a with a, a chip on the shoulder, a rough day or a rough week. And if there's any way you can communicate and make them feel like, you know, uh, we're all in this together, uh, it's a uh, it really does change the mood and really does change the speed of the shoot as well because sometimes shoots could go for like hours seven hours it was the longest shoot i've done but that's because you know you need talented hair and makeup people to change up the look every time you know so that, and i always have like wait if, if people are on like in a time crunch because sometimes makeup's on a time crunch or i'm like hey just start with an easy makeup look and then we'll build up use the same makeup not have to take it off tricks of the trade to make the work just uh more fluid, faster, and convenient for everyone because not everyone's on the set time. Sure, sure. And you know, you you mentioned something kind of kind of piggybacking on that from the beginning is you know you talked about a little bit once you once you were breaking in and kind of getting started a little bit of this kind of you know who you know and and things like that for for people who are trying to break in and who are trying to get into the industry. You know, obviously it's a I guess from the outside looking in, people would say a cutthroat industry, um, you know, but it is, it is something that's tough. And I think people are always trying to figure out the angle of how they can get involved and, 
you know, whether it be assisting or, you know, just throwing your name out, you know, what do you, what do you recommend to people to, to get their foot in the door and, and kind of, kind of carve their own way, you know, stand out from other people who are doing it and make their yeah. own, their own style. Um, uh, I say if you do not have a style yet and you want to get a style as fast as possible, there are websites and there's Facebook groups where you can grab models to shoot with, get makeup hairstylists as like collaborative efforts, try to jump into as many projects for fun, for free, as fast as possible, because you need to understand if you will like this, because it is a very cutthroat, cutthroat industry. It is a lot of who you know, and the more you shoot with people for the fun of it, and the more you build that portfolio that's strictly fashion or strictly street or strictly uh, e-commerce, uh, you will get into that industry in in no time. Yes, it's gonna might it might take one year, two year, three years, but you will see your portfolio grow. It'll shape stronger. It will become um, more you than you know you trying to copy this person or that person. Um, interning, uh, mentorships, finding people that are in the industry and asking if you could be an assistant, a grip, uh, even just a part-time consultant helping them, you know, in general, uh, that's extremely beneficial. Uh, when I did own a photo studio, I would help a lot of uh, the photographers uh, free of charge just because I wanted to see how they worked. I wanted to see what made them tick, which how they would use my lights differently from how I would use them. Uh, like there's, everyone has something to offer. Uh, every photographer has a talent and it's just how you use it um, and how, how fast, how much you use it. You know, like if you're consistent and you're pushing out content, if you're being relevant into all these cyber spaces, people are going to notice you and people are going to ask, Hey, like, how are you? Who are you? Um, I've done a few internship programs with uh, people that were interested in learning fashion photography and, the people that I've seen push beyond like their own boundaries, uh, those are the people that I look for. I hope that that happens because it's uh, it's all about learning. We're here to give each other all the knowledge that we can. We're not here for a long time. I don't know if I'm still going to be passionate 10 years down the line as in fashion photography as I am now, but uh, I do understand that meeting people and just having the conversation and talking about fashion industry as a whole, as a photographer, because in LA, it's different from NY, it's different from uh, London, and it's different from uh, Tokyo. For LA, uh, it's very big, a big county, big city. Um, you have to take these like jobs that might be far. You have to meet these people at a coffee shop and just like know that it, the, the, the artist might not like you, the photographer might not like you, the model might not like the photos. You have to take these risks and just be consistent and meet everyone because the more you are relevant to everyone and the more you shake hands, one less person you're going to have to be really like uh, not yourself with. And I think if they see you as yourself and you're really ambitious and wanting to learn and you're taking the approach, shooting, shooting, shooting as much as possible, even if it's a spaghetti strapped uh, t-shirt and some blue jeans, you can make it look fashion. You can make it look cool. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be dynamic. Uh, it could just be a simple outfit. And if you really take the approach and learn the fundamentals and just try it, you will get somewhere and people will notice because for any of us, we do something long enough, they're going to notice. We're going to have a few friends. We're going to have a few fans. We're going to have a few, uh, just anything, but maybe a few dollars in our pocket, you know, it just, it takes time. Yeah, for sure. Now, one thing I wanted to kind of segue back into going back to sort of the Stella Pro Light, you know, one thing that you mentioned, and I think a lot of people are starting to lean towards is the fact that, you know, you haven't really played so much around with the strobe function of it, but you've been using it a lot as a continuous light. Why, why, <laughs> why, why, why continuous versus going, going strobe, you know, what is, what's the advantage for somebody who's looking at this light and thinking like, you know, Hey, you know, like you said, you've got the, the CL series, which is, you know, pretty much strictly continuous versus going with something like the reflex where you do have the combination of both, which is nice because you could do either or, you know, what, what makes continuous so appealing? Why, why do people 
embraced it so much? Why do you see that being very prevalent nowadays? The continuous light. Uh, so I, I come from using uh, Kino Flow 4 banks, so huge tube lights. So I come from using huge continuous lights and having something that's bite size and continuous, it gives off way more power. It gives me more of the ability to just move it around on the whim, be like, hey, well, let me have the light to the left. Let me have the light to the right. And it not be a whole hassle, moving sandbags, moving C stands, uh, doing all the things that you would do with a larger uh, lighting unit. With the Stella, I could change the modifier on a whim. I could put uh, off the box. I could put a umbrella. I can put whatever I want in it and still get the type of lighting that I personally like. Uh, a lot of my photos, if you notice, they will be very contrasty, very like very highs and a lot of lows. And it's just a mix of that. And I try to keep uh, my style as consistent as possible. So if I can use a light that's smaller and still has all the power that I need, uh, why would I why would I change it for a different light? I get other lights have different they different qualities of light, different styles. There's uh, all we can we can talk uh, we can talk science we can talk creativeness for hours but in the end it's uh it's being convenient and just it's it being convenient that you can use it you can work around it you can just it it is a possible it, it there's many possibilities for this light that I've noticed while using it uh, in the field. Awesome, great answer. So I mean. For for people who wanna who wanna catch up with Jason Rivera, who wanna follow along with Jason, you know, where can where can people do that? Where can they find you? Where can they see more of your work? Uh, they can go on my website, jrivphoto uh, com, or Instagram, jrivphoto, J A Y R I V P H O T O. Um, and then I'm trying to do more of like the reels and showing getting people more into like how I'm shooting stuff. So catch that on Instagram as well. I'll be trying to do some tutorials, a little bit of talking, but I just want to show people lighting setups. Uh, I like shooting jewelry. I like shooting streetwear. I like shooting uh, still life has been like a newfound passion for me. So it's been uh, interesting jumping from the fashion to just products in general. So just uh, learning and uh, you'll see, you'll see my, my growth in a year from now, I'll probably be a different artist than I am right now. So uh, just continue shooting, yeah. At Jrip photo. Awesome. I think I think that's I think that's always sort of the case. Is you always want to be pushing the boundaries and kind of evolving, not getting stagnant in in where you are because otherwise, eventually you'll probably burn out, and then you probably... burned out many times. <laughs> <laughs> I've burned out many times. Uh, I'll uh, I'll be honest about burnout. Uh, I think burnout's one of the best thing that can happen to an artist because you can just stop, stop. Like I used to just have a camera on my hip and shoot everywhere, ride my bicycle. I still have my camera to shoot. Um, at one point uh, I was working so much that I never even touched the camera unless it was work. And then that's when the burnout really happened. I wasn't just like this, like just, I, I, I was not disassociating Jason time because I'm more than just a photographer like I think the best like a uh, creative um, the, the best uh, renaissance moments I've had in my head epiphanies you could say have been when I'm not on a camera looking at in a coffee shop looking at a tree and it's like 3 p.m and just leaves are falling and then there's like people running and they're dressed really cool and I'm like that would be a crazy fashion shoot that would be awesome you know like those are the moments where I'm not on the camera when I'm not there, uh, where I feel re-inspired, uh, or even just uh, going going on a going on a binge of different artists, different photographers, and just seeing their work in different parts of the globe, because it's beautiful to see that the camera can connect everyone all over the world. You know, no, for sure, for sure. I mean, any any kind of last thoughts, things things you want to leave people with that that you hope uh, people will take away. Um, in regards to fashion or just in photography and just like the, the magazine shoots as, as a whole. Yeah. As a whole. Yeah. Of photography. Um, so 
I, I never thought I was going to be a photographer when I first started. Uh, I did pick up a camera and I was documenting cycling culture, uh, a lot of the cycling realm, sports photography, uh, you would say. And uh, one day I was just like, you know what, I'm going to travel the world, take pictures in Japan, China, uh, Korea, and just go see what's going on with the world. And uh, I literally was just like all right what do I do next like I can do whatever I want I have a camera I just told myself I can do whatever I want I can do it I can enjoy myself on a camera in any situation I found some things I don't like I can't do fashion I can't do wedding photography it's too much work it's a little crazy and nutty there's a special person for that though and you have to understand where you fit in this uh, puzzle in this grand puzzle of the world and um, uh, I met so many just bright people in the fashion industry that, you know, they're not the typical cutthroat people. And I, and I found those people and I made friends with them. And they're parts of my like various little teams in the industry that I, we cheer each other on. And if you have a group of people that could cheer you on and not feel like you're a competitor or not make you feel like you're uh, taking their gig, taking their job, taking their light, find people that, you know, see you as like, good job, great job, great work. Like, I can't wait to work with you one of these days. I can't wait to work with you next week. You know, if you could find people that just put you up and just lift you and uh, uh, see that you do have a skill that acknowledge the fact that you all are just like, um, one of my uh, old singing teachers told me, we're warriors of light. We are people that are shining light to the world. If that, if you can just do that for the rest of your life, you live a beautiful life you only brought kindness and i think if my photography can do that uh we're going somewhere uh we're going as a society as humans into a better direction so i love that i love that message i think that's super great i think if if you're not part of the photographic community it'd be a little odd maybe you watching this then <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you've been thinking about joining the photo group, maybe maybe you are maybe you're just buying your first camera and you you know you stumbled upon this and you're thinking like hey where do I go with this you know join in I mean I think that's that's ultimately what at least the event space is, is sort of all about what we're trying to bring about is is people joining that community and and you know educating each other and helping each other get to another place in their in their you know path of photography, whether it be just the start, the middle, even, even when you think you're at the end, you know, there's always, there's always part of the journey that you have to cover. And, um, you know, at least for the event space, that's what we want to do. We want to empower everybody to go out and shoot and get inspired. So, you know, being able to, to team up with people like Jason and Stella Pro, you know, that allows us to do that. If, you know, if you've got a little photo club in your area, get involved, go out, shoot, maybe try shooting something like you said, you know, you, you, you found that you didn't like shooting, you know, weddings, you, you weren't interested in that. And, you know, now, now you're pushing into kind of getting into a little bit more of that still life and product life and, you know, keep pushing those boundaries and find what it is that you're passionate about. And keep, and keep pushing. Even when you think you found it, you may, you may surprise yourself, you know? There you exactly. Go. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, the still life stuff came because I like to shoot. Uh, I, I, I like to see things in a way where it's just like an epic, like Western or an epic, just like a movie, a cinematic movie. And I just, if I can try to get that in a camera on, even on a, like an opal ring or on a necklace, like that's, it's pretty cool. The challenges that you would have to go through and just like move the lighting around and just really like even throw a little bit of smoke and just try to give it that whole oh, light rays, you know, uh, I think uh, just my evolution as an artist from uh, doing a lot of fashion photography, a lot of editorial, uh, just moving from there to a different form. It, it, it all works together because it's all in the end, those skills can, are still the same skills that you can implement to whatever realm of photography jump into. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Jason, I want to say thanks for being here, joining us. Janine in the background, thank you so much, as well as Stella Pro for sponsoring this event. For everybody else who joined in and watched this, thank you for joining us. Thanks for watching. But that's all the time we have for now. This has been another edition of the BH Virtual Event Space. We'll catch you next time.